Thank you very much indeed. Uh, John, thank you very much for inviting me to come and talk. I thought I'd put my red jumper on to make you feel festive. Uh, just think of me as a, an early Father Christmas. Um, but I'm very conscious that all of you in this room know far more than I know about chess and education. Um, and so I feel something of a fraud standing in front of you. And it reminds me of when I was uh, introduced into the House of Lords uh, when I became Minister of State uh, for Trade and Investment about three years ago. And John Gardner, who was one of my sponsors when I went in, said to me, Mark, remember, when you stand at the uh, dispatch box answering questions, there will be many people in the chamber who know far more than you know about international trade. He said, in fact, I can readily think of five people sitting here who did your job before you. <laughs> and so what I thought I would try to do this morning is give you a very personal view of why I wrote a book called The Foolish King and uh, why I built uh, a chess app, uh, an online site, which is now uh, played by, oh, some questions quickly, which is now played by about, 28,000 kids around the world, uh, and I launched, I wrote the book, the book was published about two and a half, uh, three years ago, and 15,000 copies of the book is sold. Um, so how, why did I do that? How did I get to doing that? Uh, well, I don't come from a chess playing family. Uh, I come from Crewe in Cheshire. Uh, my parents didn't really play games, certainly didn't play chess. Uh, they had a friend who was a headmaster, uh, called Mr. Quine, and uh, they used to pack me and my brother off uh, to uh, have tea with him, and he taught us how to play uh, chess in his rather stuffy study. My brother was much better than chess, uh, uh, chess than me, which is very frustrating because he was three years younger than me. Uh, but nonetheless, we used to play chess. We had a chess club at Crew Grammar School for Boys, which I went to, um, and so I played lots of chess competitively, and I would rank myself as below average, but I love playing, I love playing. And after school, I went to university, I read archeology span and ancient history, and then I joined the John Lewis Partnership, and I had a long career in the John Lewis Partnership, and latterly I ran Waitrose uh, Supermarkets and was deputy chairman of John Lewis. And it was during that time, probably about 10 years ago now, maybe, actually maybe a little, little longer, 15 years ago, that I decided that I would teach my eldest daughter, Holly, and my younger daughter, Lily, uh, how to play chess. And there are three reasons why I taught them how to play chess, which for me go to the heart of why chess is so important, particularly the last of the three. The first one is that um, you learn in chess, or 99.9999 people learn in chess, that there is always somebody better than you. And you learn to lose, and you learn to win occasionally, and you learn to be gracious and shake people's hands and look them in the eye, whether you win or lose. And I think that's a great life lesson. In addition to that, you analyse. You analyse where you did well, and you analyse where you did badly. And you self-analyse. And I think that now, that is a really important skill that this next generation learn. The world, as you all know, is changing at a rate of knots around us. Uh, Technology is going to transform the workplace. I think a lot of the things that we're seeing with Brexit and in France at the moment and in America and the political disruption are all based on the fact that the world is changing at a rate of knots that people are finding very hard to deal with. Children today in school, I suspect, will work into their 70s, they will work into their 80s. I'm on a committee in the House of Lords that looks at intergenerational fairness. And there is no doubt that Generation Z now have a less good deal than my generation. And the world's going to change even more. And so giving them the skills to understand what's going on around them, I think is hugely important to analyse that and to take some control for themselves. 
The second reason that I taught my daughters chess in, in uh, addition to learning how to win and lose and analyze what's going on and how to improve is that you need a plan. Uh, there's no point walking up to a chessboard and moving any piece randomly. You have to think about what you're going to do. And you need to be proactive in thinking about what you do. But in my experience, most people in life don't think about that. They really don't have a plan. They go into work, they go home. And so I was very keen that they thought about what they wanted to do. Now I have come to the conclusion, rather like the Dalai Lama, that the purpose of life is the pursuit of happiness and to try and stop suffering and harm. But principally, it's about the pursuit of happiness. And if you are going to pursue happiness, you need to think about what you're going to do and how you're going to do it. You need to measure it and you need to have a plan. So I wanted them to be proactive in their life plan. The third reason I did it and for me, the most important thing about the game of chess and eight other games in the world is that it's an abstract strategy game. The first two things I said, winning and losing and having a plan, you can apply to almost any sport and almost any game. But the genius of chess is that everything changes. You start with a plan, as you all know, and based on the moves of your opponent, you change your plan. When I ran Waitrose supermarkets, uh, we had a very clear plan about what we wanted to achieve commercially. Believe it or not, when I was in the British government, we had a very clear plan about what we wanted to do with Brexit. But you're not playing on your own. You're playing against people on the other side who have their own ambitions. They want to win. And so in a supermarket context, on a daily basis, your customers change, your products change, your suppliers change, the market changes, everything's changing constantly. And the brilliant thing about the game of chess is that it is not a game of luck. It is a game where you respond to what the other person is doing. And I think in the world going forward, in the world that our children are going to see, that ability to adapt, coupled with that ability to self-analyse, coupled with that ability to plan, are absolutely key life skills. For me, chess was never about trying to make them cleverer, although I think on one level it probably does. It was about learning those skills. The other thing that I was conscious of is that, um, and I was really interested in the gender analysis that you were giving. Um, when I talked to my daughters about losing, uh, learning to play chess, they said to me, it's a game for boys. And I said, why is it a game for boys? She, they said, well, it's about war and battle and knights and castles and bishops and kings. And so I had that thought ringing in my, the back of my mind. <laughs> But I was determined that, that chess was the game that I wanted to teach them. And so I was sitting in the garden uh, in our home one uh, summer, 15 odd years ago, with Holly, and we had a board laid out in the garden, and I was explaining to her how the pieces moved. And for some reason, she just didn't take to it the nights and that she, she just wasn't taken to it. And so at that moment in time, as luck would have it, a butterfly flew past. And so I said to her, this isn't a night, it's a butterfly. And butterflies hop from flower to flower. And that's what knights do, they hop. And then the bishops, they're like wriggly worms. They don't go forward, they move sideways. And the pawns, they're like ants and bees. They only move forward. You don't walk backwards if you're an ant. You can't fly backwards if you're a bee. So they only go forward. And so bit by bit, I started to make up a story for her about how the pieces were, in fact, insects in the garden so that she could help remember how they moved. And then I began to explain to her as I elaborated my own story over the years that it was all about a game between the insects and they had this game every morning instead of going to war with each other and fighting each other and every day was to make them better at their task so aerating the soil if they were worms or pollinating the flowers if they were uh, they were butterflies 
And I did nothing with the story. I wrote it down on a couple of sides of paper so that when Holly had uh, grown up a bit and the younger sister grew into it, I could use the same story to explain the game to uh, her sister. And then when I started at Waitrose, um, I was asked to write a couple of food books. Um, I wrote one about picnicking, called The Great British Picnic Guide, um, and it did reasonably well. And so the publisher kept phoning me up saying, will you write more food books? And I said, look, I really don't have time. And they wanted me to write a book about royal food and all sorts of things. And I said, I really, really don't have time. So they said, well, have you got anything else? So I sent them through the three scribbled pages I'd written, and they saw it, Ebury Random House, and they said, we think this is quite good, but we don't really do children's books. We'll pass it to a man who does. And so they sent it to a chap called David Fickling. And David Fickling is a wonderful children's publisher. He's published uh, Jackie Wilson and Philip Pullman. So um, he very, very kindly uh, said to me that he thought there was something in it, but it needed a lot of work. 35 rewrites, and eight years later, the book was finally published, which I was really, really proud about, and at the start, as a dedication to Holly. Once I'd done that, I wanted to try and get children playing, and so I built the app, which is based on the story, uh, and it's available in Android and um, iOS, um, and, uh, and online, and I tried to make it fun so that when a piece takes another piece, uh, it disappears into a green mush, and it goes <coughs> which children find very funny. And so I was really keen to try and make the game accessible and fun. And as I said, I'm delighted to say that 15,000 copies of the book have gone. Uh, they're sold in Australia and New Zealand, as well as in the UK. Uh, I'm very pleased to say that lots and lots of children are playing the game around the world. My next step is to uh, think about the other abstract strategy games, and there are eight more. Uh, there's drafts, uh, an international drafts, as you know, which is more complicated than checkers. Uh, there's a medieval game in Europe called Fox and Geese. Uh, there's an Italian game called Reverse, uh, which um, uh, Mattel have called Othello. There's an African game called uh, Mancala, and there are many versions of it in Africa. There's a North American game called Racing Snakes. Um, there's an Indonesian game called uh, Sukara. And as far as I'm aware, oh no, there's Nine Men's Merrill, which is Roman, uh, ancient Roman game. And as far as I'm aware, they're all the games in the world that are abstract strategy games, that after the first move, um, anything can effectively happen, and you have to respond to that move. And I want to publish books on all of those, and I want to make apps and games on all of those. And the reason that I want to do it is whatever route it takes, I'd love kids to spend some time, rather than on shoot-up games or whatever, just spending some time on something that makes them, hopefully in a fun and educational way, think about winning and losing, and that's okay, either option is fine, thinking about the ability to self-analyze, thinking about planning ahead, and lastly, thinking about that ability to adapt to the circumstances that you find yourself in. So that's my story. I've been asked outside questions about um, politics and politicians and chess, and I'm happy to take any questions you have on those. But I just wanted to tell you my very simple story. It wasn't based on doing anything grand. It wasn't based on conquering the world. It was based on helping my two daughters learn how to play a fantastic game. And as a consequence of that, uh, to become, hopefully, more prepared for the life that was ahead of them. Thank you very much. Thank you.